Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we're going to cover AWS step functions. All right, so the question is, what is AWS step function? An AWS step function allow for creating serverless workflows. So basically what you could do is that you can graphically just write what you want it to do, what you want it to perform, which is pretty easy and pretty kind of, you know, like uh, visual and intuitive. So for example, you can do start here and then you can do submit request. And then the next step is you can wait for, let's say five seconds. And then you can decide whether you continue on, let's say to request complete, or you can get request status back. And then you can ask here if the request complete or not. Well, it might be a failed request or you might get something. So you will get final request status and then you will end and that's it. Again, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So the output from a step is being fed as an input to the next step, as we saw here. And AWS step functions convert a workflow into a state machine diagram that's easy to debug and understand. And AWS step functions allow for performing resilient workflow automation fast without writing code. And that's the beauty of it. You know, like it's, it's, you can basically just using, using these like uh, charts, you can easily create um, a very um, advanced systems without the need to actually write, you know, intensive code and so on. And it allows for advanced error handling and retrying mechanisms as well. If you guys want to get more information and actually learn a little bit more about this, there is a great video here offered by AWS. I highly recommend that you guys watch it to give you an idea of what the uh, step functions are. All right, so let's take a look at another example that's, you know, kind of close to our application, which is in machine learning. So obviously for machine learning, you need to fetch your data, you need to get your data, and then you need to train your model. And basically that's kind of, you know, the beginning or the initial step when you actually, uh, in the entire uh, machine learning workflow, you actually get the data, you train your model, and then you basically save the model and uh, make it ready for inference, for, to deploy it basically in practice. So you can start with fetching, fetching the data here, and then you can select either you're gonna train text model using natural language processing, or you can train image model using, let's say, ResNet. Think of it as you know now you are taking the data and you are training two models in parallel. You're actually training an image classifier, for example, using, you know, like ResNet network, or you can, and, I'm sorry, not or, and you are going to train a text model, let's say using NLP, um, for example, you're going to use, let's say, Amazon Comprehend, for example, high-level service to do that for you. And then you can basically get feedback. So either you notify success, notify failure. And if you notify failure, you are done, you're good. And if there is success, you are going to save your trained model and that will end it here. Obviously, like, you can add additional steps here to make inference, for example, based, based on that trained model. But that's kind of, you know, you guys got the idea of the step function. All right, let's take a look at more examples. Again, I try to, in this course, to include as many kind of systems integration as possible because that's what the exam will gonna test you on, okay? So for example, let's take a look at step function in action. So as you guys can see here, this is the uh, logo basically for the step function. So when you see that, you know that there is, you know, some um, kind of, you know, I would say orchestration happening so for example, here, the user might take a photo and upload that photo and will upload that photo to Amazon S3 bucket. So photo right now is uploaded and stored in an Amazon S3 bucket. And then what AWS step function could do is that the AWS step function can perform task orchestration to perform, let's say, image analysis. Let's assume that I wanted to analyze this image so I can, the user will upload the image to S3 and then I can run AWS Lambda function that basically that function will invoke the Amazon recognition service. Actually, we're gonna discuss Amazon recognition in the modeling section in domain three. But the overall idea is the Amazon recognition will perform object and face detection. So it can actually detect faces. It can detect, let's say celebrity, for example, faces. It's pretty amazing and very, very powerful. I actually have very interesting demos for you guys when we get there into the modeling section. So basically AWS the function will manage that. Okay, so the user will upload the data and then AWS Lambda will basically invoke a AWS recognition service and that will give me my predictions and then I can use Amazon DynamoDB 
will store the generated data related to the object recognition. For example, we'll tell you what, the, what did I detect, you know, what my confidence score was, and so on. Pretty interesting and pretty amazing. And here in the AWS Lambda as well, could be used to consume the photo metadata, such as, let's say, the size, the resolution, and so on. Obviously, you can do here whatever you want. You can do all that in an AWS Step function that will manage the orchestration using this chart here, kind of kind of like, like this chart. All right, let's take a look at another example. Again, I try to add as many examples as I can. Let's assume that we have advertising data and we have revenue data. So we have two data coming in and being streamed to Amazon S3 bucket. So now I have adverti advertisement data, something like, you know, dollars spent, how much I spent for dollars. The ad campaign details, for example, let's say ad revenue, for example, such as let's say Facebook and Instagram. And I can invoke, or I'm sorry, and consume as well the total revenue uploaded and stored in Amazon S3 bucket. So all that information, such as total revenue, ad, campaign details, all that will be uploaded and stored to Amazon S3. All right, okay. And then what happened is AWS Lambda, Lambda function will ensure that the data set is present and available. So this is just the job of that Lambda function, just to make sure that, you know, everything is, is ready and everything is actually ready to be consumed by Glue and all the other services down, down, downstream. So I might have CloudWatch events. If you guys remember, CloudWatch can be used to actually uh, schedule jobs or kind of set alarms, if you guys remember. So I can schedule a job to run every, let's say, day or a week, for example. So we're going to consume that data, which is simply our advertising data and our revenue data. And AWS Step Function will start the ETL orchestration job, will be the, the maestro, basically, for the entire thing. So we're going to use AWS Glue to, con to consume the advertising data from S3, which is one which is coming from here. And I can use AWS Glue as well to consume the revenue data coming from S3 as well, okay? And then I can use AWS Glue here as an ETL service to actually combine that data. So I can combine the advertising and revenue data. I can also visualize it and infer correlations as well. So I can say, you know what? When I spend, let's say, this dollar amount on these ads, on these specific on this specific platform, let's say Facebook or, or you know, like, a, like a Instagram, and based on this, let's say, you know, like, um, like features, let's, let's say geographical location, geographical regions, I was able to generate, for example, this X amount of revenue. This information is critical for corporations to actually analyze that data and gain extremely uh, important insights about basically the, your ad campaign, for example. So again, as you guys can see, AWS Step Function can do all this for you, basically. Can do, can consume, help you consume the data, and then you can help you, basically, using AWS Glue to, con to, uh, con to combine this data from these two different sources, and then you can be able to visualize it using Amazon, let's say, um, QuickSight, for example, or whatever business intelligence tools. All right. Okay. And that's all what I have for this, um, for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it and please enjoy AWS machine learning certification course. And I will see you guys in the next lecture.